Good, good afternoon and welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sonam Putra and with me today is Ekta Batra. Ekta, good afternoon. Well, uh, we have seen some fall from the top as far as Nifty is concerned. And in just last couple of minutes, even the bank Nifty has seen after uh, an outperformance, uh, it has slipped into the red. That one is down 66 points and it is only the Midcap side of things which are actually bucking the trend. So Midcap Index is the one which is up 140 points. Advanced decline ratio absolutely flat. So there was some attempt of recovery but looks like it is sold into Ekta. Hi Sonal, yes absolutely but the mid caps and the small caps seem to be doing better and that's uh, basically the crux of the show. So let's get to all of the top stories that we're tracking on mid cap radar. Mid caps outperform larger peers in a uh, choppy session, Nifty nears 17,000 near uh, 900 after giving up early gains, autos, utilities show strength, defensives falter. South Indian Bank rallies on the back of large trade shares surged nearly 20% after 1.7% equity changes hand at a price of 10.4 rupees per share. Aditya Birla capital gains after CCI clears investment in its health insurance arm. The competition watchdog approves over 650 crores worth of investment by Abu Dhabi Investment Authority ADI. SIAT hits a fresh 52-week high. It's up 20% after upbeat commentary at its investor meet. The company expects near-term volumes to be driven by strong demand in the original equipment segment. Okay, so those are all of the top stories that we're tracking this afternoon. Let's get talking about the technicals. We have Dharmesh Shah of ICICI Securities joining in to discuss what he's strategizing in terms of the broader markets. Dharmesh, hi. Welcome to the show. Well, that's uh, really where it seems to be in terms of uh, bullish trend, which is uh, the broader markets. So what would your call be on the mid-caps as a whole and specific stocks as well? Good afternoon. It, uh, definitely, I think so the... Market has seen a momentum very strong in the mid caps and the small caps, and we expect this extension of of moves should continue for mid caps and small caps. We see, I think, so more of a nifty to talk of should see the challenge of life five, which is eighteen six hundred in the by October. Same is with the mid cap and the small caps. We believe, I think, so the way the mid caps and the small caps outperformance should continue going forward. Now, coming coming to our top picks from the mid caps and the small caps. We believe, I think, so the consumption theme is the one we should see a uh, upward momentum. As if you look at the consumption consumer durable index, I think so that has witnessed a breakout from the falling channel of last eight months of corrective phase. We believe consumption should see a better up move as also if you see the rainfall has been the good in the consecutive fourth year of a good rainfall and also the fall in the commodity prices, industrial matters and the Rent crude is something a big catalyst and positive for the consumption as a whole. Now, coming to our top pick, inside the consumption, we feel Supreme Industries is the one where we remain to be positive. Now, Supreme is India's leading plastic manufacturing company with a market leader in a PVC with a market share of 15%. Technically, we feel, I think, so for Supreme Industries, the stock has witnessed a falling channel breakout with a strong volumes. We feel the stock should at towards 2340 is likely target for supreme industries from the current level. Even the risk reward seems to be more favorable for supreme. Keeping a stop loss of 1850, we expect supreme to see the relative outperformance from the current levels. Second, again, we stock which we like is the Jamna Auto. Now, Jamna Auto is again a part of our auto and really as a manufacturer of suspension. In CV, now it's a good CV proxy play, I would say. One is on the bullish on the CV cycle, I think so. Jamna Auto is the one stock where the stock seems to be taking a breather after a strong move from 100 to 130. And more of a consolidation right now going on in the stock. We expect stock to head towards 139 with a stop loss of 104. Now, if you look at the Jamna Auto, the stock seems to be taking a support at the 52-week EMA for last two years. It seems to be the current up move was also supported with the 52 week EMA. EMA. We expect the stock to head towards 139 in the coming days. Okay, all right, Damesh, thanks a lot for joining us and taking us through your technical picks. Moving on to our segment mid cap movers, we have Vivek with us today to take us through the mid caps that are moving around in trade. Vivek. Well, it's quite a buoyant day as far as. Uh, you know, most of the mid caps are concerned. In fact, if you're talking about the entire auto pack, the auto pack is surging. But along with you know the core auto companies, the core OEMs, 
We're also seeing the auto ancillary is doing quite well in the session today. So have a look at Mahindra CIE. You know, this particular stock is moving with strong volumes in today's trading session. And CIE, just like we highlighted, you know, it's moving up. It's at first at the upper circuit uh, on the back of the fact that the company gave very strong demand commentary as well as easing supply chain issue commentary as far as the Goenka Group Investor Day conference was concerned. Along with that, yesterday we highlighted the fact that a uh, lot of the holding companies were doing very well in the session. Today, select companies continue to do quite well. In fact, have a look at JSW Holdings. Only in this particular week, in the last five trading session, the stock has gained almost 35%. Along with that, BBTC, which was a bit of a laggard, has now started catching up and today doing quite well in the session. Uh, some of the other stocks that are on our radar, look at Dollar Industries. Today it's doing good on strong volumes. And Kalyan Jewelers you know, stock is uh, near its lifetime high. Today, it's up, um, you know, almost uh, five, five and a half percent. And this particular week, the stock has gained 18 percent. Um, on the other hand, when you're looking at some of the stocks that aren't doing so well in today's trading session, a GR Infra, you know, this particular stock on the back of the OFS and the supply overhang by the promoters, the stock is sulking in trade. PB Fintech uh, down for the second straight session on the back of the fact that the company has announced uh, investment into a subsidiary. Mahindra Life Space Developers, you know, last couple of trading sessions is taking a bit of a breather after reaching lifetime highs. And GMDC2 today is sulking the session. Okay. All right, Vivek. Thanks uh, very much for bringing us that entire list. We need to take a short break. But up next, we'll be talking to Manoj uh, Vishwanathan, who is the MD and CEO of Home First Finance, a housing lending company, to discuss the company's business. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Additional pressure coming in for the market. So the Nifty is now down over 125 odd points, down around 7 tenths of percent. Mid cap index is holding up with a gain of around 3 tenths of percent. Bank Nifty also relatively resilient in terms of losses as compared to the frontliners. But let's get talking to a couple of companies from the broader markets then amid buzz that some investors might be looking to exit the mortgage finance, or home first finance. We speak to the lenders, MD and CEO Manoj Vishwanathan to discuss the investor interest along with the outlook on demand as well as uh, the entire rising interest rate scenario. Manoj, hi, welcome to the show. Uh, you know, just wanted to start by asking you, you have uh, uh, multiple investors, uh, you know, in your uh, shareholding. Are any of them looking to exit at this point in time? Any conversations that you've had, any kind of queries you fielded? Yeah, I guess you are referring to uh, some, uh, uh, you know, news that has come out in the, you know, this morning. And uh, uh, we, of course, are not uh, privy to uh, or party to any such discussions. And, uh, you know, I don't think any of the uh, um, investors are looking to exit the company completely. Um, of course, we are a listed company. So, uh, you know, uh, there may be changes in shareholding. But, uh, uh, you know, what the article implies that, you know, uh, certain, uh, you know, shareholders are planning to exit the company, uh, company completely. Uh, we, uh, you know, we deny that uh, uh, entirely. Okay, so um, you know, that is not uh, true at all. So that is not true at all. Just for information purposes, Mr. Vishwanathan, uh, was there a time period mandatorily given to them when they invested that they have to invest for, say, a couple of years, X period of time? Um, so we have four large uh, private equity investors uh, from whom we have raised capital over the last uh, you know, several years. Uh, so we have Besama Venture Partners uh, who hold about 8% of the company. Uh, we have True North and uh, GIC, which uh, combined, uh, the combined holding is about 30, 33%. Uh, and we have uh, Bobak Pinkers, which holds about 29% in the company. And uh, so amongst these four investors, uh, we have True North and Aether, that is the GIC. Uh, they are the uh, promoters of, of the company, uh, as, uh, you know, and classified in SEBI. So uh, these two uh, entities uh, have a certain portion of their shares locked in. So 20% out of the 33 is uh, locked in. Uh, so only the balance 33, uh, balance 13% is available at this point of time. Uh, so as per the SEBI norms, uh, you know, for listing, uh, the 20% uh, shareholding is uh, logged in till uh, February of 24, 2024. Okay, so there's uh, possibly no exit uh, 
you know, entire exit from the promoters at this point in time. But the article that we were talking about was referring to Wobok Pinkis, which is probably looking to exit entirely. You did mention fleetingly that uh, it, you know, uh, it might not be an entire exit. But uh, do you think that there could be maybe a partial amount of stakes sold by Warburg? Uh, you're denying the fact that he'll probably exit entirely, but a partial stake sale? So partial stake sale, the company would not be privy to these kind of transactions, right? So they, they would happen in the market, so the company would not be privy to those transactions. Okay, okay. All right, so uh, let's talk about business now because uh, a quarter one was decent and you did indicate back then that you did not pass rise in interest rates to the customers in quarter one. Have been able to do that in quarter two and by how much? Uh, we did uh, pass on, uh, you know, a portion of the interest rate hike to uh, customers in quarter two, effective from July 1st. Um, so uh, a 25 basis points increase is something that we have passed on to customers. Um, and um, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, uh, the the, uh, the transmission of the interest rate uh, increase uh, happens gradually. Uh, and uh, so far, uh, you know, on our, our back book, we are we have also experienced a similar kind of a hike, and hence uh, we have passed on that hike to customers. Okay. All right. Uh, talking about the fact that we are in a rising interest rate scenario, your net interest margins were around 6.4% in the previous quarter. Spreads, in fact, had risen by around 20 basis points Q and Q. Where do uh, these two particular statistics stand? What's your guidance? Um, spreads in an interest, uh, you know, rising interest rate uh, scenario. I mean, if this trend continues uh, for a few quarters, uh, then the uh, spreads uh, that we had enjoyed over the last, uh, you know, the, the several quarters um, could come down uh, marginally. Um, so we are currently enjoying spreads of about five and a half to, uh, you know, or upwards of that, five and a half percent or upwards of that. Uh, so there could be a, probably a 30 to 40 basis points kind of a compression on the spreads. Uh, but we don't see, uh, you know, a, an impact beyond that. Okay. And uh, what is the near-term AUM growth that you're penciling in? There was a recent Motilal Oswal report which is suggesting that you can do 30% AUM growth. Is that something that is achievable or you can do even better than that? 30% uh, AUM growth is something that we are uh, we are targeting and we have been uh, delivering. If you see uh, the last six quarters, uh, you know, uh, quarter on quarter growth also on an annualized basis is around 30% uh, uh, for the AUM. And, um, um, you know, based on our plans and in uh, plans of increasing distribution and, uh, you know, increasing the uh, uh, strength of our people, etc. So uh, that's 30% uh, is the uh, AUM growth that we are comfortable with and we are planning to grow by. Okay, how are you doing on asset quality? Because uh, there was some improvement in the 30 DPD, 1 plus DPD in the previous quarter. Uh, and give us a sense in terms of where the, uh, you know, asset quality stands uh, when it comes to 90 DPD as well. Uh, so 90 DPD also imp improved by about 10 basis points last uh, last quarter. So the, from the previous quarter, 1.3, it came down to about 1.2%. So uh, that's a more gradual kind of an improvement that we're seeing. And uh, because it's now the figures that all, all the figures, the one day past due, 30 day past due, as well as 90 day past due, are uh, very close to uh, pre-COVID uh, numbers. Uh, so uh, from here on, the progress will be, uh, the, the improvement will be more gradual as we kind of, you know, uh, uh, get very close to the pre-COVID numbers on these, uh, on these metrics. Okay. And how is the demand generally? Top 10 states, they are actually contribute 74% to affordable housing finance, which are the focus states for you. And generally, is affordable housing on the rise? Because across the board, even luxury is doing so well. So how is affordable in that case? Um, there is a massive, massive demand for affordable housing. Uh, so when we go down to our branches, go down to the markets, uh, we are seeing that. Uh, so there is a lot of, um, you know, movement or migration of people from, you know, smaller villages to larger towns looking for livelihood. Uh, and these are the people who, uh, you know, uh, end up uh, building or buying their first homes. Um, so there is a there is a huge demand and uh, the demand is largely, uh, it follows, uh, you know, the way the, uh, uh, you know, the per, per capita income grows, uh, you know, in the country. So uh, you can see that the more industrialized states like Gujarat, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, uh, these are the states uh, where the uh, demand for affordable housing is also picking up very fast. Uh, so our focus states are uh, Gujarat, Maharashtra and uh, the uh, uh, four South Indian states, which is um, Karnataka, Andhra, Telangana and Tamil Nadu. Uh, we are uh, expanding our distribution in these states and our aim is uh, we would like to uh, be present, uh, uh, you know, everywhere in these states. And if uh, any customer in these states would, uh, you know, uh, is looking for an affordable housing loan, uh, we would like to be uh, present there to offer that uh, loan to these customers.
Okay. All right, Manoj. We're going to leave it on that note. Thanks uh, very much for joining in and providing that clarification as well that uh, no, Warburg is not looking at a complete exit from the company and uh, denying those reports that came out uh, uh, a couple of hours back. And uh, however, they can't comment on whether or not they would look at any kind of partial stake sale. That's uh, the word coming in from Home First Finance. Recent listing got listed in Jan of 2021. Let's shift focus now to the auto space. Uh, passenger vehicle makers perk up as signs of a fight back emerge. Eminem's Anish Shah tells CNBC TV 18 that uh, tells CNBC that the SUV major is looking to double capacity. Listen in. So we are looking to increase the capacity dramatically uh, at a time when there is talk about global recession, etc. Exactly. But, uh, we have seen just huge demand for our products and uh, we have one problem today, which is we can't service our customers on time mm -hmm. uh, because of the level of demand, which is really unprecedented. And uh, therefore, we are looking at uh, increasing capacity dramatically. We are considering whether we can go up to even doubling our capacity, uh, which is a huge statement uh, as an automaker. Okay, that's the word coming in from Eminem. With that, we'll slip into a break. But before that, a quick reminder for our viewers. It's that time of the year again. Money Control Pro's financial freedom offer is back with added benefits. Get a Money Control Pro subscription at net zero cost by claiming exciting offers worth 1,500 rupees from our partner brands. Grab the benefits now only on the Money Control app or website. Welcome back. Well, it is all about the autos as well as the auto ancillary space. And in our mid-cap spotlight link, we are focusing on that sector. Uh, uh, Sonal is watching Sia. Tell us uh, what is the what is the update there, the fact that the stock is up 20% now. Oh, yes, that's right, along with the other tyre names, right? So uh, they had an investor day and the commentary was quite positive. Uh, they say near-term volumes will be driven by strong demand in their original equipment segment. Exports, however, will remain subdued in the near term. But in the longer term, of course, exports are expected to drive growth for the company overall. Uh, rural demand is relatively weak, according to the company, across the replacement and the original equipment segment so both of them are not doing so well however european demand that is the one where the pressure is really coming in from it is seeing some headwinds and dealers are not stocking up and that's why the weakness in the export markets as well the two to three percent sequential increase in commodity costs will lead to a stable margin on a quarter on quarter basis so that means the higher commodity prices are still not impacting margins and that's I, that i think is the bigger takeaway from the entire meet as well and they expect to go back to 10 to 12 percent margins over the next few years as well. FY23 CAPEX, the amount is 900 crore rupees out of which 500 to 600 crore rupees will happen in second half of FY23 itself. And by FY26, in longer period of time, they expect to gain leadership in two to three wheelers and achieve leadership in passenger car radials as well. That is the segment that they are bullish on. So Nomura says that they expect the EBITDA margins to improve from about 6% that they did in quarter one, which is a decline, to 10% by FY24-25. So a big jump in margin is what the commun uh, in analyst community and the company is expecting as well. And that's why the stock is doing so well. And along with it, the other tire stocks like MRF, Apollo Tires, all of them are buzzing in trade as well. Okay, mm -hmm. running away, speeding away in today's <laughs> trading session. Thanks, Sonal, for that. Uh, but let's move on then. The Central Electricity Regulatory Commission orders two power distribution companies to refund Tata Power the fixed charges that they had deducted. What does this mean? Vivek Ayer is here with more details. Well, that's right. Well, some relief coming in for Tata Power as far as the Mundra Power Plant tariff issue was concerned. Uh, Tata Power had actually gone ahead and approached the regulator saying that despite Section 11 which of the Electricity Act, the states that, you know, the fixed power under recovery cannot actually be levied, what actually happened is that both GUVNL as well as the Maharashtra State Discom were deducting almost 20 paise per unit while they were paying Tata Power. So what actually happened is that in this particular case, CERC has now directed both the power discoms, both Gujarat as well as Maharashtra, to refund the deducted 20 paise per unit uh, of fixed charges back to Tata Power. And they have directed uh, you know, both the discoms to actually go ahead and pay Tata Power this particular under recovery charges within the next week. So it's a slight positive development as far as Tata Power is concerned. On the other hand, you know, there has been another uh, uh, directive issued as far as uh, CERC is concerned, they have upheld you know, the Gujarat Discom's uh, directive or claim of capping the capacity charges at 80% of the availability. This is something which analysts say was along expected lines and wasn't really being uh, penciled as far as the estimates of Tata Power were concerned.
Okay, so some positive news coming in from for Tata Power. Vivek, thanks a lot for making sense of that news piece. And with that, uh, it's a wrap on this edition of Midcap Radar from Ekta, myself and the entire team. Thanks a lot for joining us. Mutual Fun Corner when we return.